Our goal in this video is to look at the laws of exponents. And to do that, we have to remember the big numbers here are called bases. Little numbers up here are referred to as exponents or powers. Now, 2 to the third power is how you'd read this statement. Because 2 is the base, 3 is the third power. Or you could say 2 to the exponent of 3. Um, really just means to take the number that's the base and write it down three times and then multiply those numbers. The reason we write it down three times is because we're using the exponent or the power as a guide. If it was a four, we'd write down the base four times and multiply it. But here, we just have a, a base of two with an exponent of three, so it's two times two times two, which is eight. Now, uh, one of the first laws we can look at is um, a special property when we have some base to some power times another base of the same value with a different or the same exponent, we can take a shortcut. Instead of figuring each of these components out and then multiplying them, we could just keep the base and then add the exponents. For example, let's say we have 2 to the third power times 2 to the second power. Now, you could figure out 2 to the third power as 2 times 2 times 2, and then 2 to the second power, which is 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 2 times, well, 2 times 2 is 4. We're multiplying these, remember, and 8 times 4 is 32, and that could be your answer. But what we're saying here, let's look at this, we're saying that if you have two of the same bases, and we do, 2 and 2, and we have two exponents that can be the same or different, what we do is add them, and it will be equal to this. So here, let's keep the base the same and add the exponents, 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, so it's 2 to the fifth. So what this law says is that when you have these two components, instead of doing each of them separately and multiplying them as we did here, you can think about it in one shot, 2 to the fifth power. 2 to the fifth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. Notice we got the same answer over here. Now, it, what I often do is if I'm given a, uh, a question like this from saying, what is 2 to the fifth power, I usually go to the reverse and think, okay, what is 2 to the second? And what is 2 to the third? Figure them each out and multiply them together to get the result. So this law works both ways. Why does it work? Well, you can see that in effect what we're doing, when we're doing 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 2nd, we're just taking 3 2's and multiplying that result by 2 2's. In other words, we have 5 2's altogether. So instead of thinking of them as separate terms, we use the associative property of multiplication to regroup them and think of them as one term. So this will always work. And another property that we have is, let's say we have some base or some power. And then we're saying, well, take that and raise it to another power. Whew, what does that mean? Well, just take the base and then multiply the exponents. What does this look like and why does that work? Let's say we have 2 to this third power and then that to the second power. Well, the PEMDAS in the order of operations tells us let's deal with the inside of the parentheses first. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. That's in parentheses. Don't forget, we haven't dealt with the exponent yet. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's our parentheses. And then that squared, which is just 64, because 8 times 8 is 64. So this is our answer. And we went about it using PEMDAS. We solved the inside of the parentheses, and then we dealt, we got 8, and then we dealt with the exponent next, and we did 8 to the second power, which is 8 times 8, or 64. Now what this law says is another way of dealing with this kind of a problem um, is to multiply x and y, the two exponents. Here's our two exponents here, 3 and 2. So we can keep the base the same, and then do 3 times 2, which is 2 to the 6th power. And if we break that down, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
times 2. And from our last problem, we knew that this is 2 to the 5th, and that was 32. Now you take 32 times 2, and yes, that is 64. So that works out. So our last law that we're going to talk about today is when we have division. And again, a to the x over a to the y. Why did I write a fraction when I wrote division? Remember that this sign right here, the vinculum, it means divide. So this is really saying a to the x divided by a to the y. So a shortcut here is that you keep the base the same, but subtract the exponents. And that kind of makes sense. Think back to before, when we were multiplying two bases that are the same with exponents, we added the exponents. Division and multiplication are inverse operations. So now that we're dividing, instead of adding the exponents, we subtract. What does this look like and why does it work? Let's try 2 to the third power divided by 2 to the second. So without this law, what you might do is write 2 times 2 times 2 in the numerator. That's 2 to the third power. And 2 to the second power is 2 times 2. And then you would figure out these individual components. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. The answer is 2. Using this law, we might have seen that sooner. 2 to the third divided by 2 to the second. We subtract the exponents. We keep the base the same. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 to the first power is 2, which is what we got here. So this law works. Why does it work? Well, if we look at this right here, we might be able to see the answer. <clears throat> when you're dividing anything by itself, you get 1. So here's 2 divided by 2. We can cross them out because that's just 1, and 1 doesn't affect anything we're multiplying, because we're multiplying these numbers. Another 2 and 2, so they cancel out, and what's left over is the answer. So if, essentially what you're doing is subtracting the number of 2's down here from the number of 2's up here. And this might really help us. Let's say we have a problem that's like 2 to the 7th, divided by 2 to the 6th. I don't want to figure out 2 to the 7th and 2 to the 6th. But what I can recognize is that we have 7 2's up here. 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 2 to the 7th. And then 6 2's down here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And remember, any individual number divided by itself gives you 1. So this pair, this pair, this pair, this pair, this pair and this pair leaves you one two at the end. So the answer is just two. We might have seen that because again we're subtracting the number of twos here from the total number of twos here. So it's seven twos minus six twos which gives you one two. And that would look like this. Two to the seventh divided by two to the sixth equals two to the seven minus six. Which equals two to the first power. Two to the first power is two and that is our answer. And that's the basic idea.